ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who is truly worthy of all praise we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Allah belongs the most beautiful names that Allah has taken unto himself and attributes of complete perfection which befit his greatness and his majesty and whilst we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we acknowledge our deficiency in praising him as he deserves to be praised he is as he has praised himself and all thanks is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the source of all blessings and peace and salutations upon the messenger of Allah the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent as a mercy to all of the alamin dear brothers and sisters last week we embarked on a journey and that journey was searching for guidance and hidayah and we were still on the first point this hidayah what is it the types of hidayah aqsam al hidayah and after this we if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us life we will discuss the means to attaining hidayah and then after that the signs of being guided how do i know that i'm upon hidayah last week we discussed three of the four types of hidayah and hidayah amma which is something which allah has instilled in all of men and all of his creation in fact allah created them and he then instilled in them a nature that nature that they follow is something from the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we gave an example of the ant and the bee that even the small creation of Allah Allah has given them a form of hidayah and that hidayah al-amma is what carries them to do the things that they do then we discussed the second form of al-hidayah which is hidayah al-biyan wal irshad and that is to know the path that Allah has sent for the believers by sending prophets and revealing to them books so following those prophets and those books and then after those prophets and we still have the books following those books led by people of knowledge and then we talked about the third which was a tawfiq the ability this is also hidayah from allah and when we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ihdina as-sirat al-mustaqim allah guide us to the straight path the misconception that many people have is that hidayah is only to know the path but in actual fact in this dua is also the hidayah of tawfiq the ability to tread that path and we know in history people who knew the path they knew the truth from the falsehood but they didn't have the ability to tread it and we give an example which all of us are familiar with the example of abu talib the uncle of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who helped the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in all of the difficulties that he faced giving down to the people of makkah but when he came to himself whilst he acknowledged that this was the true path he failed to follow it he died to feel and the fourth is the beginning of today's khutbah he died in akhirah guidance in the akhirah and this might seem 
strange to be the fourth form. But inshallah, you will see from the proofs that inshallah will be presented that this is also one form of Hidayah. And to start off with, the Hidayah of a person in the Akhirah is based on how his, he followed the Hidayah in the dunya. This is something that Ibn al-Qayyim said, and many scholars have said, and it is something which is logical that all of us can relate to. If we are guided and we follow that guidance in the dunya, then Allah will guide us in the Akhirah. What is the guidance in the Akhirah? There's a beautiful hadith, the hadith of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu, which is in Al-Bukhari and the other books of hadith. So the hadith is authentic. And he talks about the journey of the Akhirah for the believers. And part of this journey in the Akhirah is crossing the path over the Jahannam. And you know there are narrations which mention this path. That it is finer than a hair and sharper than a sword. And it has prongs and thorns on it. And it is strung over the Jahannam. And this is a path that the believers have to take. And Allah alluded to it in the Quran. Allah Taala told us about it in the Quran. Allah Taala says, وَإِنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا There isn't anyone amongst you except that he will be present in this path and he will have to take this path. And then Allah says, كَانَ عَلَى رَبِّكَ حَتْمًا مَقْضِيًّا Allah Taala has levied this upon the believers. This path, the Sirat, people will cross it, and there are others that won't cross it. And those that cross it won't all cross it in the same way. The hadith, and we have to, we don't have time to paraphrase the hadith. But there are those that will cross the path. Imagine this, like a flash of lightning. You put the right foot on the path, and like a flash of lightning, they'll cross. <coughs> there are those that will cross the path like a wind. And then there are those that will cross the path like someone who is galloping upon a horse. And there are those that will cross the path running. And there are those that will cross the path walking. And there are those that will cross the path on their bellies, on their hands and their feet. And there are those that will not cross the path. The Jahannam will consume them and take them. So imagine in the Akhirah. Here again we are in need of Allah's guidance. So brothers and sisters, this path, which the Prophet mentioned in this hadith, he says, إِذَا خَلَصَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ مِنَ النَّارِ When the believers, they have been saved from the hellfire. So they've crossed the path. Now there isn't a chance that they're going to fall into it. Oh joy, Jahannam is behind us. Now there is only Jannah in front of us. But it's not as easy as that. Now the believers are going to be held back from the Jannah because there is still something which is outstanding. As Allah's Messenger وسلم, mentions, can imagine the last person who crosses the Jannah, this path. <coughs> can you imagine him turning around and saying, Oh Allah, you have blessed me so much. You have given me such a blessing that nobody has been blessed with this blessing before me from all of the Alameen. And then he will find that there is still another hurdle. The Prophet ﷺ said, That they will be still held back in a place between the hellfire and the heaven, the paradise. And Allah's Messenger ﷺ says, 
that they will, between amongst themselves, there will be something that is between themselves. When a man has wronged another man, or a woman has wronged another woman, when anyone has wronged another person, it doesn't go unnoticed by Allah. Before they enter the paradise, they will be prevented, prevented from entering. And at that point, they will be ordered that there should be judgment between them. And all wrongs will be righted. So this will be between the believers, because of course only the believers will cross the path. Because the Prophet said in that khalas al mu'minun, the believers. So this is going to be between the believers. Because this is not our subject, we won't want to linger on it too much. But the mazalim that Allah's Messenger is talking about here is the rights between believers. Those rights, how often we overlook them and we cross the boundaries on them and we don't realize that this is the hardest thing to find an exit from in the Qiyamah. Allah the most merciful may forgive what is between him and his slaves. You were late for a prayer, you missed a prayer, you did something that's between you and Allah. Allah the most merciful may forgive you that. But what is between you and the creation? That's the right of the creation. And Allah on that day will establish complete justice. So we will have to pay the penalty there for all the wrong that we did to our brothers. And you know the currency on the day of judgment is not the dollars or the pounds that we have in our pockets that we strive so hard for. That we made an effort even we crossed the boundaries of Allah and maybe this is why we're going to have to pay now to earn those pounds and dollars. Now the currency is not pounds and dollars. Now the currency is good actions and bad actions. So the believer will give his good actions because he did something to another person. He spoke badly against him, backbit him, made namima. He stole his wealth. He spread rumors about her or she spread rumors about her. All of those things, they're not hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they will have to then start to pay compensation. The compensation is to receive good deeds. If you were wronged in the dunya and you were patient, Allah will give you the deeds of the person who wronged you. So he came and prayed, you will receive that good deed. He fasted, you will receive the good deed. And there may be some, Ya Shaqawa, look at some people who come on the Day of Judgment, toiled so hard, and then to come on the Day of Judgment to have all their deeds taken. And when there are no more good deeds to give, then after that, you will receive. But unfortunately, not good deeds. Then you will receive the sins of other people. So every time you wrong somebody, and you've got no more currency left except bad deeds, then you'll be given their bad deeds. So you wrong them, because you wrong them, they will give you a bad deed. So brothers and sisters, this is something that we should always bear in mind. After this qasas of the mazalim, which is between the believers, Allah's Messenger says, حَتَّى إِذَا بُذِّبُوا وَنُقُوا after this point when they have been sorted and after this point when they have been purified then Allah's Messenger وسلم, says then they are allowed to head towards Jannah question which may have occurred to you certainly occurred to me that who will show the believers where they are supposed to be ok I am Fortunate, you are fortunate, together we are fortunate that we have been admitted to paradise. How will we know where to go? Which is my place, which is your place? And it is here 
that we want to look at the words of this hadith very carefully. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, فَوَلَّذِي نَفْرُ مُحَمَّدٍ بِيَدِهِ He swears by Allah, he says, I swear by Allah, the one whose hand is my soul, the soul of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, لَأَحَدُهُمْ أَهْدَى بِمَنْزِلِهِ فِي الْجَنَّةِ مِنْهُ بِمَنْزِلَةِ كَانَ فِي الدُّنْيَا He will be like somebody, imagine now, after you finish the Jum'ah the Jum here, you'll go, do you need somebody to show you the way home? All of us know the way home. We will know our place in Jannah better than our dunya. So we will know where we are going. Who guided us? Allah guided us. He died for life. Allah Ta'ala will guide the believers. This is the Hidayah in the Akhirah. As Allah Ta'ala says, يُدْخِلُهُ الْجَنَّةِ عَرَّفَهَا لَهُمْ Allah is the one who taught you this Jannah and where your place is. But those are the people of Jannah. What about the people of the Akh in the, in the, in the hellfire? Allah Ta'ala says, وَحْشُرُ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا وَأَزْوَاجِهُمْ وَمَا كَانُوا يَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَاهْدُوهُمْ إِلَىٰ صِرَاطِ الْجَحِيمِ Those who didn't obey Allah didn't believe in Allah, weren't guided by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who made zulm, them and their wives, and all that they used to worship besides Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, they will be resurrected. And Allah will say, فَهْدُوهُمْ إِلَىٰ صِرَاطِ الْجَحِيمِ Guide them to the path which leads to the hellfire. So the guidance in the Akhir is the fourth type of guidance. We want to spend a few minutes to talk about the asbab of al-hidayah. How am I going to be guided? We talked about guidance. Now I want to be guided. How do I look for guidance? Where do I look for guidance? One of the biggest asbab or means of guidance is to know Allah. If you look at the Quran, the Quran again and again talks to us about Allah and His Sifat. In fact, a third of the Qur'an, scholars said, a third of the Qur'an talks about the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How often Allah ta'ala describes Himself with His names and His attributes. So we know Allah is the Creator. Allah creates and He created. He has the ability to create. It is these names and attributes that are the biggest means of guidance. And if I can give a reference to something which is practical. Didn't the Prophet tell us that whoever not only memorizes but then also acts, understands and acts upon 99 names of Allah. This hadith, many people are confused. They think that Allah only has 99 names because this hadith mentions 99 names. This is not the case. The truth is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us whoever memorizes 99 of all of Allah's names. So there are more than 99 names. But not memorizing them only. It's to act upon them as well. Knowing those names is not sufficient, but then acting upon that knowledge as well. <coughs> so whoever memorizes those names and acts upon those names, they are going to be in paradise. Why? Because this is the greatest means of hidayah, knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does it mean, knowing and then acting? Well, if you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is severe in punishment, when it comes to doing the sin, you remember that name. Now you're going to act upon that name, which means to what? To avoid the sins. When you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most generous to his slaves, then you will know to call upon Allah with this name of generosity. And so on and so forth. So the greatest of all the means for a person to be guided is to know Allah. Ad-da'arabu'an Allah. And the more that a person knows Allah, the more guided he is. And the less that he knows Allah, the less guided he is. So brothers and sisters, knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second is Al-Iman, 
believing, truly believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is not something that I just dreamt of, but Allah says, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says, man yu'min billahi, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says, man yu'min billahi, whoever believes in Allah, yahdi qalbah. Allah guides his heart. You want to be guided? Believe in Allah. And believe in Allah without any doubts. Without any conditions. When you believe in Allah, Allah will guide your heart. Isn't it we see in the dunya people, maybe they don't know a lot about Islam. But when you meet them and you talk to them, you find, subhanAllah, these people, they are already Muslims. Because they truly believed in Allah. So Allah guided their hearts. So you need to, to push a little bit to show them the path. And they are quick to accept Islam. And how many of them are? We just haven't cared to look yet. So Iman. Allah says, Man Whoever believes in Allah, Allah guides his heart. Believing in Allah. The third means, and we're only going through this very quickly because time has already escaped us. al billah. And that is holding on to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> and Allah's commands. Belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَعْتَسِمْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَوَدَ هُدِيَ إِلَىٰ صِرَاطِ مُسْتَقِيمٍ And whoever holds fast to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been guided to the straight path. Making muraqab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. Is one of the means of guidance. The fourth, as salah the prayer and making the prayer. And doesn't Allah Taala wa Taala say, "Inna salata kana ta'ala mu'minina kitabu mu'minina"? The prayer is something which is specified at a time. It's no good making the prayer late and then saying, "Oh, I prayed." Or in fact, as Allah Taala wa Taala reminds us, "Inna salata tanha min fashah wa munkar." The salat is something which prevents a person from fashah and munkar. From lewd and evil actions. If we look at our salah and we look at our actions, we're still doing lewd and evil actions. Then there's nothing wrong with the statement of Allah. There's something that we have to do, and that is to look at our salah. Are we doing our salah the way it should be done? Consciously? At the right time? This is something. Maybe a lot of us make the prayer, but we find our prayer is really lacking. Do we understand what we say? How often, when we say something and we don't understand the meaning of what we say, it doesn't come from the heart. So the prayer and doing the prayer correctly is one of the means of guidance. And of course, one of the other means of guidance is a suhbah a salih being with righteous people. What does Allah Ta'ala wa ta say? Yawma yaqul zalim wa la On the day when the person who does wrong bites his fingers and his hands and he says Ya waylata Layten La matakhid fulan khalila If only He says to himself War to me If only I have not taken such and such a person as my friend. Why? Allah Taala tells us further in the ayah. لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنِ السَّرَاطِ لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ He took me away from the remembrance of Allah. You were going to the masjid, so you met him on the way. He said, I'm going to the gym. Going to the gym may be good action because the body has a right, and that right is that you look after it. Yeah, let's go and do that. But you're going to the prayer. You're going to miss the prayer. So leave the gym. Go to the prayer first. And then go to the gym. How often shaitan makes us look at things and not weigh them in the correct balance. So what did he do? Turn me away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After it came to me, 
shaitan. It's always deceiving mankind. So this eye out there is just not enough time to discuss it properly. So we want to quickly, very quickly in the next two or three minutes mention what are the alamat of guidance. What are the signs that I'm guiding? Well, first of all, tahqiq al-iman. That we follow and carry out what iman necessitates for us. The second one, hifd wa salawat Being mindful of our prayers, protecting our prayers. And also, from amongst the signs of guidance, those who follow what they hear. Allah Taala says, "Fabishir ibadi al-ladini yistamiun al-qawla, fayyatamiun ahsan." Give glad tidings to my slave. Which ones? Those that when they hear a statement, they follow it to the best of their ability. So when you hear something of guidance, to follow that guidance, that's a sign that we are guided. And also, a dawah to a person who is guided calls to that guidance. So brothers and sisters, very quickly we discussed guidance and the path to guidance, the means to guidance, and the signs of guidance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us a people when we hear the truth, that there's a bit of a bit of on it. And also make us a people when we hear the falsehood, recognize the false. We give us a bit of a moment of our poor man is now. Bismillah <laughs> اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وارض الله من أربعة الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وأن سائر أصحاب نبيك أجمعين ونحن بيت الطيب من الطاهرين وارض الله معنا معهم بمنك وكلمك وجودك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذن الشرك والمشركين ودمر عداء الدين وحمي حوزة الإسلام يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإتاعة القربة وينهى من الفحشاء والمنكر والبري عيدكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله للذين يذكركم ودعوه يستجيب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقيموا الصلاة